of the Artistic Nomads. And I'm the other half, Johnny. Today I'm going to be behind the camera and popping in and out. Yes, because today as part of the Radically Reducing Project, we are going to sort my clothes. Not our clothes, just my clothes. And it's very important to always sort your own things rather than trying to sort from, for someone else because you don't know what emotional attachments people have. You don't know how often they use or don't use something you may think you know, but that's just you know what your brain cho chooses to associate. They're the ones who can make the choice for themselves. Now, Johnny's going to be keeping me on script. <laughs> it's kind of my job. There are rules that we have set for deciding what clothes to keep. And there's five of them. Is it stained? Is it ripped or torn? In those cases, it goes. Does it fit? Does it fit? Does it fit? And there's three ways to look at this. One, does it still fit you physically? Have you outgrown something? Have you lost weight, gained weight, changed your body size because you bulked up? Does it still fit your physical form? The second does it fit to consider is does it fit your style and your lifestyle? So do you have some clothing that you used to work in an office and you don't work in an office anymore and you still have your office wardrobe? That no longer fits your style. If you've changed your personal style, you may still have a bunch of clothes from a previous style that don't fit anymore and you should probably consider letting those go. And the last does it fit is does it fit the space you have to store things? <laughs> and this is where our Radically Reducing project matters because we're moving into an RV. We don't know how big the RV is yet. We may be tempted to keep this because obviously this fits in the closets and the dressers that we have now, but it won't fit in an RV, no way. We don't know how much space we'll have, so I'm gonna try to get it down as much as I can, and I may have to get it down even further once we purchase an RV and see how much space we actually have. The first thing I have already pre-sorted, I used to wear a lot of dark clothes and I stopped that a few years ago and I thought it was going to be a temporary thing that I would stop wearing dark clothes and then I would go back to wearing it so I held on to a lot of stuff as you'll see for when it was okay to wear black again. Um, I don't think that's going to happen anytime in the near future. These shirts were collected at events that I went to, and I'm not going to show you all of them because you don't need to know what events I've gone to in the past. So I don't want to just take them to Goodwill because they have logos from the events. I'm going to find people in my community that I know might like these, and I'm going to offer them to them rather than trying to just dump them at Goodwill and then people are like, what the hell is that? <laughs> I don't know what that event is. I see shirts like that at Goodwill all the time, and I wonder who actually takes them. <laughs> so this is my specially sorted going to specific people batch of clothes. I may add more to it based on what's in here. Black, therefore, goes away. <laughs> Dark gray, goes away. I really, really like this vest, but there it is. Again, black. So I haven't worn it in years because it's black. It's going away. This shirt I had hidden in the back of the closet because I really, really, really like this shirt and I really want to wear it again someday. But the predominant top color is black, so it does not fit my style anymore. It probably doesn't fit my size anymore either because I've lost weight the last couple of years. But this sweater it's so comfy it's so comfy when it's not 115 degrees outside when it's not 80 degrees outside when it's not 60 degrees outside which when you live in phoenix isn't very often um we're going to be on the road we don't know where we're going to travel when it's going to be cold when it's not going to be cold my issue is, there's two of us. We need to have some long sleeve, wintry type clothes for when we're in colder places, but it has to fit in this tub. Mine and Johnny's together have to fit in one tub.
because I can't see us having enough room in an RV to have multiple tubs of out of season clothing. So we're going to have to make really tough choices about which sweaters to keep and which sweaters to let go of. So I'm voting for this one. It's fraying a little bit on the ends. So it fall, falls into the ripped. I could probably sew that up really quickly, but it's going to go in the go. The other thing that I'm trying to keep in mind through this is that Goodwill, Salvation Army, Savers, there are thrift stores everywhere. So if I get rid of clothes and then I suddenly find a need for that type of clothing that I've given up, I can probably find it for three or five bucks, something to replace it long enough for whatever purpose it serves and then recycle it back in and use Goodwill as my recycling. Also, there's like, you know, sporting goods stores that have, you know, madcap sales sometimes. Like if we went to a cold place in the middle of summer, we could probably find some sort of sale they're always on warm on warm things They're always because things. me for me <laughs> in the cold places I need warm things yes and if we knew we were headed towards a cold place then we could prepare for that and swap out our our short sleeve shorts and lightweight clothing and then replace it with what we need for that part of the trip Now we're getting into just, these are the clothes that I pulled out of my closet. This is a guy. That's pretty. This is a very pretty, <coughs> it has wonderful colors. I love this shirt. It does not fit me since I've lost all the weight that I've lost. So as much as I hate it, hate doing it, I don't hate the shirt. As much as I hate doing it, this is gonna go, so. Thank you, shirt. Are you going to talk about each and every piece of clothing? No. I don't think I have enough card time for that. This is... I'm going to talk about stains. This shirt has a stain that's hard to see probably on the camera, but close up, you can see it. It's small. There are a lot of my clothes, there are a lot of Johnny's clothes that have stains like that on them. I keep a lot of them because I don't go out much, I'm a homebody. So I wear, I have no problem wearing a shirt with stains in the house. But I probably have 10 shirts like that and I don't need that. So I'm going to try to pare it down to maybe two or three lighter weight and heavier weight shirts that I can wear around the house even though they have stains and the rest of them are going to go. Well, and what about once we're in the RV? I will probably still keep one or two, but the thing about an RV is that you're never alone. alone. <laughs> There's always people in the but area I, who could come knock on your door at any Do time. I care about what my shirt looks like to the other people if I'm just butting around my, probably my not. RV? Yeah. Probably not. These are, these are things to think about. And if you are somebody who, for whatever reason, you know, works on your car, works in the garden, does artwork, does heavy cleaning of your house once in a while, whatever sort of thing, and you need those clothes that are ripped and stained, then figure out how many you actually need and pare back to just that minimum amount and get rid of the rest. Because you don't need 10 shirts to paint in. Maybe you need five, one for every day, and then do laundry. <laughs> So I will sort later through what's stained and what's not because stained clothes can't go to places like Goodwill if it's like a really huge obvious stain or rip. I stains, I've purchased things from Goodwill and gotten them home and found they had stains.
like to talk about, like, that one's got a special logo for you. Um, when I was going through some of my really, really old clothing, like, we're talking 20 plus years old, um, I had some shirts with some special logos, and um, I cut them off the shirts, and I'm, I'm keeping them to incorporate in some form of mixed media art, like a memorabilia uh, right. uh, altar or something like that. Right, and when we moved at one point, we gave a lot of shirts and other things that were meaningful to us to somebody who was going to make a quilt of it, and it never happened. I checked in with them a year or two ago, and they said they were still working on it or something, so I may check in with them one time, and if not, then you know we've obviously said goodbye to that stuff. But there are apparently now places. I saw a commercial either on YouTube or on the TV the other day. You can send them a bunch of t-shirts and they will make the quilt for you and send it back and then you have a quilt and you have to pay the money of course you, uh, but. <laughs> you of course have to pay money because you have to pay to ship it that's and then brilliant you, and then you pay for the and the the example they gave was this kid was going away to college and mom and dad were like you don't need all those old t-shirts and they yeah. had like concert and events and sporting t-shirts and so they sent them off and he went to college with a quilt made of all of his shirts that's cool it's a really cool idea this is really hard because I really love this event. It's right on that edge of the color I can or can't wear. You've worn it a couple times. Yeah, but that gray issue has only happened recently. And the color thing is like my personal style. I don't want to wear certain colors, so... Because of how they make me feel or how they make me look. And gray right now is not making my mood very happy. Right, right. right. And this is kind of a greenish gray, so it's... On the border I think I'm gonna keep it for a little while longer if I don't find myself wearing it in the next couple of weeks then it'll go back out what well, there are a lot of different ways to deal with your clothes and when we do our summary video of this we'll talk about the different ones and I'll probably do a blog post on it too that we'll link to at some point. So, how many shirts do I have over here? A lot. <laughs> but I wear a lot of shirts. And I may pair, so like I said, we may pair some of these down once we get the RV and know where we're going to be living for however much long and how much space we actually have. I like you, but you're too dark. Oh, that's really old. It's really old. It is, I don't even know what size it is. Oh, that's not going to fit me anymore. <laughs> Yeah, two things too. That one doesn't fit you anymore, does it? Um, it does, but I've only worn it a couple of times, and I don't know when I would need to wear it again. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to, after we're done with the video, I'm going to try it on one more time and see how it fits. If it still fits me well, then I'll hold on to it. If it doesn't, then I will get rid of it. <laughs> Oh, we're still adding to this pile. Okay. These sweats actually do not fit me anymore. They're really loose because I've lost so much weight. But you need at least one pair of sweatpants to, just to lounge around the house when you don't feel like putting on clothes. Or some women, when they're on their period, want their pair of sweatpants. 
Some people wear them as pajama bottoms, and you just want one for that night when it's so cold that you actually need pajama bottoms. So I'm keeping one and getting rid of the other. Because we lived in New Mexico for a while, because we once visited Kansas in the winter, <laughs> and occasionally it actually gets cold enough here in Phoenix that you need a coat. Um, I don't really think this one fits me. The last time I put it on, it was kind of loose and I was having to cinch it in. So I think this one's gonna go. Let me make sure I don't have gloves or anything in the pockets. Always check pockets. And I'll check the pockets of all those things before we donate them because gloves! Oh my god, that's where they were? Wow. I'm keeping the gloves because, yeah. uh, well, they're gray-ish. By the time we're somewhere where I need gloves, it's probably gonna be okay. Same, I think, with this coat. I hate leaving myself without a coat, but they don't really fit anymore because of all the, oh yeah, this is a 3X. And I haven't fit you a 3X swim in, that. in so long. So we know that when it's time to move out to the world, the hangers are doing weird things. Before we start traveling, Before we, we make sure that we make a list of the items that we need like a coat for me <laughs> before we go any place that might be cool. All right, I have here a basket, a basket full of my underwear, which I'm not going to sort for in front of you. I don't have anything really, you know, sexy or whatever, but I'm still not going to sort it in front of you. I am going to show you that I have a bunch of these footy things which are for, you know, wearing with your work shoes. Pantyhose things. When you wear work pants. I don't own any dress pants anymore. I held on to these in case I ever had an interview, but I've been working from home for six years and we're developing our own on the road businesses. If I ever got to the point where I needed to be dressed up, I would be going to buy something new that fits the me that's then. So all these little kind of things will get sorted out make sure that you follow those stained ripped does it fit does it fit does it fit when you're looking at your socks your underwear your bras your ties whatever things you have those are the rules one more box to talk about box of socks this is a box of <coughs> mending so if you watched our um low-hanging fruit I threw out a whole bag of socks that I had been meaning to darn and had never gotten around to. Well, those were the socks that had been sitting around for like a year and I never got around to. These are the socks that just came out of our last load of laundry. <laughs> so there's a few of them. There's a bra that I need to fix. If I set it by and do it while I'm watching TV, then these will get mended and put back into rotation. Always set a limit for yourself of if I don't mend the things in this box by X date, then I will throw them out. Does that mean you're going to put a, a, a reminder on your calendar? I will probably put a reminder on my calendar that says if I have not mended these, like by the next time I do laundry or whatever, then they get tossed. And we'll talk in our summary video about what to do with the clothes once you've decided to get rid of them. Yeah. And the one other point I wanted to make is that I haven't done laundry, so there's a whole bunch of clothes back there that are dirty, plus you know the clothes that I'm wearing, that haven't been sorted. But my theory is that if they're dirty, it means I've worn them in the last week. So obviously they're in my rotation of wearing. So for now, I'm gonna keep them. If 
when it's time to move to the RV, I still have too many clothes. This is not really a lot of clothes. No, it's not. Even with what I have in the back that's dirty. You did good. Um, you did good. Yeah, so I will, I will keep these. I will keep what's dirty and obviously what I'm wearing. And, and except for the dirty clothes, this is everything? Except for the dirty clothes, this is everything. You have way more clothes than me, as they will see in the video for your story. Well, yes, all right. Are you done? I think I'm done. I've bored the cat, who's asleep <laughs> over here, you can't see. Um, but that is my sorting. If, we think of, if I think of any other tips, we'll put it in the, in the description or in the summary video. Plus, check out, we're going to do a video of Johnny sorting all his stuff tomorrow. Yeah. Well, we're going to record it tomorrow. We'll probably release <laughs> the videos at the same time. I don't know. We'll see what happens with the editing. So, follow us on social media. Check out our Radically Reducing page on artisticnomads.com. And subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss, you know, Johnny's sorting video and our summary videos. And I think after we do clothes, we're going to do books. We have to sort linens, kitchen, we still have most of the house to go through, so it's a big process. This is a huge project. Anyway, yeah, like, like they said, follow us at hashtag, hashtag radically reducing, or you can follow us at artistic nomads is what we are on Instagram, yes. Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Pinterest. <laughs> we have a separate YouTube channel yeah. that's, that shows our art and our travel. This is our radically reducing project. Um, um, and share your stories. Oh, yes, please. As I wanted to say, if you've sorted through your clothes, let us know how that went for you. You know, leave us a comment, say that you found a really good way of doing it, like the 30 rule or the hanger rule, or you created something all your own, <laughs> and the cool places that you found to donate or recycle clothing because we could use that information and we can spread it to all of our followers. So I think that's it for now. We'll see you on the road. In this video, we are talking about sorting through our clothing. Since we're on some kind of a, we're on, on, a, on a pretty tight deadline to minimize our possessions, we just piled all of our clothes on the floor, in a big pile on the floor and we started sorting. Unlike us, you're probably not on a deadline to reduce your belongings. So you may have a little bit more time or a lot more time to decide what clothing to keep and what clothing to get rid of.